Yo, I owe it to you. What do we want to do? We want to prove, curvature, that the magnitude of the derivative of the unit tangent divided by the magnitude of the derivative of the vector valued function is the same as the magnitude of the first cross the second divided by the magnitude of the first cubed. So this is a proof by construction. And since t is the unit vector in the direction of r prime, then t is r prime divided by the magnitude of r prime. And further, if we look at the magnitude of r prime, we're going to define that as the derivative of arc length with respect to our parameter t. All right, that comes back later. So what do we have here? We have r prime is going to be equal to t times the magnitude of r prime of t. If we take our original assumption about this unit tangent and multiply both sides by the magnitude of r prime. So t dot or times the derivative of the arc length with respect to the t parameter t. That's commutative. That's our first derivative. Now let's find our second derivative. Our second derivative follows the product rule. It's the derivative of the first, which makes it the second derivative, times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. And we end up with r prime is the sdt times t, and r prime prime is the second derivative of s with respect to t times t times the sdt plus the sdt times t prime. Okay, now let's consider the cross product between the two. Why? This is a proof by construction. Can we build it? Yes, we can. So we go on that tour or that construction and we see that r prime cross r prime prime, that's going to be the sdt t cross the sum of those other two. And the cross product is distributive from the right, so we do it that way. And we distribute that, the sdt t, into that cross product. And we find that we have the sdt t cross ds squared not squared, second derivative, t plus the s dt t cross the s dt t prime, fine. Now, notice now that these derivatives are functions, so we can pass them out of the cross product, one of our properties of cross product. And then we also see that t cross t is zero, or the zero vector. And here's why. Parallel, okay. So, now, what we're left with is ds dt times ds dt, which is ds dt squared. That is not the second derivative of ds dt. That says we're taking ds dt and we're squaring it. Now, further, what are we left with? We're left with t cross t prime after we pass those two derivatives outside of that cross product. Now, that's all fine and dandy. Let's look at that cross product one more time. What do we found? We found that r prime cross r prime prime, that's going to be equal to the sdt squared times t cross t prime. Absolutely. Well, in more than one dimension, magnitude. Let's take the magnitude of both sides. So we take the magnitude of the left side, and that's the magnitude of the right side. Over on the right, what we see is we have um, two, a product, and the, the absolute value of the product is the product of the absolute values? Absolutely. So I pass that ds dt squared outside. It has the absolute value on it, but it's squared, so we need not write them anymore. Let's not consider that. All right, let's consider the magnitude of t cross t. Well, we know that to be the magnitude of t cross or times the magnitude of t prime times the sine of the angle in between them because it's a cross product. But here's my claim. My claim is that they're orthogonal. So before we go any further, 
Let's prove that. So the proof that t and t are orthogonal starts with assuming that the magnitude of t is 1. It's a unit vector. All right, so let's take t and dot it with t. That's a property of the dot product where the it's going to turn out to be the magnitude of t squared, which is still 1, because that's 1 times 1. Hence, therefore, 1 is equal to t dot t. Let's take the derivative of both sides and see what happens. The derivative of a constant is 0. And on the right, it follows the product rule. That's the derivative of the first dot, the second plus. The derivative of the second dot, the first. Dot product's commutative. We combine them, double it, divide it by 2. And now we see the dot product of t and t prime is equal to 0. So what does that mean? Orthogonal. Now, let's revisit that. The magnitude of t cross t prime is the magnitude of t times the magnitude of t prime times the sine of 90. But the sine of 90 is 1. So I have the magnitude of t times the magnitude of t prime. But the magnitude of t is 1. So I'm left with the magnitude of t prime. Fine. Now, let's revisit what the magnitude of our cross product turned out to be. The magnitude of our cross product of the first and second derivatives of our vector valued function was the was ds dt squared times the magnitude of t prime. Fine. Now, because the derivative is a function, I divide both sides by it, provided it's not zero. Now what do I have? I have the magnitude of t prime is equal to the magnitude of the first cross the second divided by the mag or divided by ds dt squared. Flashback. Remember that thing that I said was going to come get us? It's here. It's now. It's good. ds dt is really the magnitude of the first derivative of your vector valued function. Now, what do we have? We have the magnitude of the first cross the second divided by the magnitude of the first derivative squared. That's t prime magnitude. Divide both sides by r prime, and you're left with the magnitude of t prime divided by the magnitude of r prime, which is one of the ways we have defined our curvature, is going to be equal to the magnitude of the first cross the second divided by the magnitude of the first cubed dot 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 done.